threat of disaster is never pleasant. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast. These safety measures are essential. The only place for prepping, survival, and entertainment. This will be your source of survival instructions and information. Every member of the family must be coached in the business of survival. Here are your hosts, Cam and Kobe. Well, it's great to see your face this morning, Cameron. Yeah, it's always good to see my face. <laughs> how are things, buddy? They're good. Yeah. How was how was uh, loss of Vegas? I'm re- I was ready to come home. Yeah. Like like it's always good to go to Vegas. Too but much like, sinning. Too too many people, man. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I walk out on the strip and I'm like, can we go back to our room now? I don't like all these people. You know. <laughs> when I'm in those places, that's I'm like something's gonna happen. Yeah. I'm gonna I know. have to get out of here, I and know. there's a billion people. I know. I think I've kind of made myself a little paranoid over stuff <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, and I was, it was fun. I got to ride the Tesla Loop, which was kind of interesting, and you it know. looks sweet. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. I think Elon's gonna, he's he's gonna save us all some way, shape, or form. I mean, and he bought Twitter, or he's buying Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> How weird is that? That is super weird. I don't think I'm just gonna buy Twitter. Today. Yeah, I got. It. I'll just get it. Just roll over in bed and be like, I'm yeah. gonna Twitter. You know, I'm just gonna buy this. This app's kind of nice, but <laughs> maybe I'll just wonder buy if it. Apple's selling. Yeah, I'll buy them too. So no, that's good. Uh, t- Kim. Yeah. What are we talking about on today's podcast? Um. So, I think it's a little little different. Yeah. We yeah, haven't yeah. really talked about anything like this. Mm. Kind of goes along with transportation and bugging out. Um. We we'll talk about. Tactical driving or defensive driving, yeah, for the prepper, yeah, because um, we're gonna cars are gonna be involved no matter what. Yeah, they are. We're in well, them most, most of our lives. We're mm-hmm. in them, and so we're we're just gonna talk about some of the things that would you know apply to just everyday safety mm-hmm. kind of you know defensive driving, but also like in an SHTF, mm-hmm. if you have somebody chasing you, you know roadblocks, like some tactics and things. Yeah, I'm not a professional driver. You're not? not? No. Nah, neither am I. I think I am. I do when live I'm behind my life the wheel. a quarter mile at a time, though. I do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but That's no, it. a lot of this is just kind of fun. Yeah. You yeah. know? Like, most of us have practiced these in high school when you shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. So. You go to the church parking lot when there's a little bit <laughs> yeah. of snow. And yeah. You go do your thing. So they have, they have like, tactical driving courses, yeah. not just for like, you know, policemen and stuff like that. They have... Like, if you want to learn it, you could sign up. For I'd sure. love to. It'd be so fun. It'd be super fun. And they, like, barricade, like, the cars are all built yeah. to, like, take a beating. Anyways, be fun. So, we're just going to talk about some of those tactics. Oh, sure. Before we get to that, though, I want to talk about Battle Box. It is the monthly subscription box for men, full of solid gear for adventure seekers, survivalists, outdoor enthusiasts, and casual preppers. Each month, Battle Box sends you the coolest selection of hand-picked outdoor survival and everyday carry gear, all valued at far more than what you'd normally pay. You never know what's in the next box, but here's a sampling of what users received this month. The Cali Loha Camp Table, which is really cool. The Climate Static V2 Sleeping Pad, both really oh, great man. items. Yeah. Oh, man. All this badassness starts at just 30 bucks a month. They've shipped almost a million boxes and one best men's subscription box of 2017. Our listeners get a free knife when you sign up at trybattlebox.com slash casual preppers. That's trybattlebox.com slash casual preppers. Casual preppers. Get your first battle box plus a free knife. And I actually heard or saw that they're getting ready to start shipping to Canada. Oh, really? Yeah, so for our, our Canadian brothers and sisters, <laughs> get your wallets out and get yourself awesome. ready for this stuff because it's coming. So, yep, use our code, Casual Preppers. Listener, reviews starts now. So, mm-hmm. best preppers podcast, five star. Yeah. Fun to listen, good advice. Mm-hmm. Helped me get my stuff and plan ready when SHTF... <laughs> That sounded weird. Yeah, it's okay. Though. Gonna keep listing. Gonna keep listing till the grid goes down. Greetings from the Netherlands. Yeah, I don't think English is the first language here. <laughs> it's all good though. Um, yeah. Thank you. No, um, from Netherlands, the Netherlands, A.K. Holland. Yeah, who's who's? Why listening do they to go us? by? Um, I think Holland sounds cool. Sure. Like new Holland tractors and stuff. Yeah, for sure, man. I don't know new Netherlands tractors. <laughs> That's still kind of cool. Yeah, I'm alright. But with that. um. Love your soccer team. Your international soccer team. Oh, they good. Oh yeah, really. And I love their jerseys. The oh. orange are like all orange. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They always, seen those. Yeah. I mean, I'm good kinda, luck. Good I, luck. World Cup. I still am partial to Brazil's uh, jerseys I, though. Yeah. Like when they're the yellow. I, I love the yellow. The yellow yeah. is my favorite. I like the blue too. The blue is good. The blue. But, but they had green sometimes too, right? They got all kinds yeah, of they, weird colors. All the colors around all the spectrums. <laughs> but if you guys want to be part of this portion of the podcast, go to iTunes. 
leave us a five-star review and make it awesome. It's a mad, mad world. So winter has finally released its uh, grip on us, which is fantastic. I'm very happy about that. But that means that the wildfire season is now upon us. Um, reading an article today, actually, I think this was on is Fox this the News. New Mexico? No, this, I, maybe. No, I don't <laughs> okay. know. No. Um, just I already a, like these big fires. I'm like, give me a break. Yeah, like, man. Wildfires have burned through almost a million acres of land already this year, according to the what? National Interagency Fire Center. Last year around this time, the number of acres burned was only about half of the current total. So wildfires peak in late spring and continue through fall. The threat for increased fire danger conditions across the U.S. is expected to continue in the coming weeks. So um, I just mentioned that because we got to be ready. If you're in those wildfire zones, those fire zones, it's something you have to prepare for. Yeah. And it's common. And if you live in California, basically the entire state is on fire like 90% of the time, I think. so. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Anyways, just be ready because it's coming. The, the wildfire season is upon us. Yeah. Prepare California now. is probably still burning there just like yeah. every day. I know. I got to go around the fire to work. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, man, it's coming quick. It is. So um, this this isn't, I mean, necessarily Mad Mad World, but it might change everything. Okay. So did you read that article that I sent you about the fifth element? I saw something about it, but I think I was in Vegas, and it was hard for me yeah. to sit and read it. So um, the fifth element like is the movie? a great movie. Yeah. Yeah. Movie. yeah. No. So, um, recently they've been like studying, uh, God, the article, of course, it's one of those that's like, gotta pay to continue oh, reading. Yeah. Um, an experiment which could confirm the fifth state of matter in the universe. What? You know, you got gas, yeah. you got, I got a lot of you got, <laughs> you got <laughs> gas, solids, liquids, and, um, Sounds like a day on the toilet. <laughs> Gas, <laughs> solids, liquids. Yeah. Vapors. <laughs> Vapor. and <laughs> Vapors. <laughs> Steam. Flame. And, and tears. <laughs> tears. Salty tears. Screams. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, this fifth element is crazy, like, reading about it. But a lot of people, th this is where I was like, they're tying it to possibly confirming the simulation oh. theory. It's like... We're in a simulation. Because of the fifth this element. data. They're finding it. I don't know. Yeah, from oh. this fifth element that they're studying. So did they give any indication on what this fifth element like is? Like what it consists of? No. Yeah, like what's the state? And they said, like, it's not going to change any of the periodic table. Like, hmm. so I don't know. Is it spiritual fifth <laughs> element or something? <laughs> it's not real or yeah. nothing, but we got we found it. Yeah. It says it doesn't contradict quantum, quantum mechanics, electrodynamics, thermodynamics, or classical mic. Uh, mechanics, all it does is complement physics with something new and incredibly exciting. So that doesn't hmm. tell you anything. Maybe we're gonna have to go. Uh, we're gonna have to ask old Professor Brian Cox when we're there in a couple of weeks. That's true. A couple of weeks we're That's gonna true. be there. Yeah. Yeah. He. He. Yeah. But he's. He all knows over lots that. of stuff about that. I'm but sure. he is the fifth element. <laughs> yeah, maybe he is. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I don't know. It's pretty exciting though. The the science is still you know discovering. People are still stuff. doing science. That's <laughs> yeah. great. I love it. No, I just was like. I always like all that weird space. I stuff, do too. But, man. Um, I think it's awesome. But it's funny where people take it. They're like confirmed. It's confirmed. Yes. we're in a simulation. Like, confirmed. <laughs> we should have voted for Trump. We haven't decided what it is. But it's like random stuff. I know. So, anyway, it's good. Mad Mad World. We're finding new elements. That's beautiful. It's probably COVID yeah. <laughs> floating around in space. <laughs> COVID did it. Yes. I'll guess what. It's all due to global I got warming. Bad news. <laughs> this fifth element's COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen. So. Caused well, by global warming <laughs> yeah. in the Republicans. <laughs> and welcome. my name is Double Bubble Cooper. <laughs> Double Bubble Signing Cooper. off. Signing off for the last time. <laughs> Simulation over. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody falls over. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're talking tactical, evasive, and defensive driving mm -hmm. today. Um, we did want to start with a disclaimer. Yeah, it right? needs to be said. So, I mean, some of the tactics and the methods that we're going to talk about in this episode, they're kind of unlawful and they're kind of dangerous. Right, right. You're, you're just not something you just want to hit down Walmart. We still have stop signs yeah. and stop lights yeah. and traffic laws. Don't be testing this stuff out on the way to church yeah. or to Walmart or to Walgreens or whatever it is. This is not an endorsement of the methods, nor should it be regarded as a training source because we don't know what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> right. First and foremost, this should probably be before every episode. Yeah, I think this is a given. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is like, yeah, we're going to be like, 
I don't know. This is what they said. Welcome to the Casual Prepper Podcast <laughs> Disclaimer. None of this is. Yeah. Yeah. So don't do this. Only do this if you're under the supervision of yeah, trained Yeah, maybe you have some land and an old mm-hmm. car. Like, it would be awesome to, to practice some of these methods and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, we still have laws. The world has not gone. That's right. We're, we're, we haven't gone that far yet. No, but I'm totally so not. why? I mean, Cam, we're talking about this, but why should we learn any of this stuff? What is the point? Why are we talking right. about it? So it seems like an irrelevant like skills thing. I always like the comments on TikTok when we post stuff. They're just like, yeah. these idiots are preparing for stuff that's never going to happen. Yeah, I know. we don't know that. And no. so um, most of our life, you know, what are the studies that you're in your car? Like thirty percent of your life, something yeah, it's insane amount. It depends, yeah, depending on where you are, it could be more yeah. than that. So a vehicle is going to be, you know, both transportation, but can also be, you know, defensive and even a weapon. Yeah, and so you really need to understand like what ways you can use it to your advantage for protection, mm-hmm. and you, you never know what you're going to face. So like some scenarios, like consider people that work in the city. Really, like you, like you were in Las Vegas. I was in Las Vegas. Not that you work in the city. Yeah. But you're in Las Vegas, ton of people, mm-hmm. and something, you know, goes crazy and you're trying to get out. Yeah. You're, gonna, you're not going to do it on foot, most likely. Most likely you're not. You're going to try and get. <laughs> Especially not in Nevada. <laughs> yeah. The so, place is, yeah, not fun to be So that through. vehicle is like going to be a critical, yeah. you know, way of staying alive, getting somewhere. And you never know. Like people may per- be pursuing you. Yeah. Um, police or something, you want to learn how to ditch them. <laughs> no. That's right. But, um, you know, other things are like when you're going to and from your location to, to pick up resources, scavenge and mm-hmm. things like that, you may have a tail and you need to know how to lose it. Yeah. And, you know, so we're just going to talk about like those basic things of being able to maybe lose a tail or if you're in a chase, like what are some of the safer ways to do it? And what if like, what if it's a martial law situation and they've got roadblocks? Right. You want to try and avoid those. Roadblocks are always like them. terrifying. It's like, oh, this is my plan and yeah. all the main routes have yeah. a roadblock. Or what happens a lot in third world countries and starting to happen in the U.S. is like an ambush. Yeah, sure. They'll set up, you know, if you ever played Red Dead, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> broken down wagon, yep. stop to help them out. Mm-hmm. Boom, you got guys jumping yeah. you and stealing all your stuff. Exactly. And, um, like, there's videos all the time of people that, you know, will just stop, like, on a freeway or overpass. Yep. And then they'll just come swarm a guy's truck to try and steal it from yeah. him. It's, like, scary stuff. What's the world come to? So, anyways, um, there's a lot of scenarios where you need to understand, like, what you can do in a vehicle. Mm-hmm. And it is a protection. And you really don't want to use lose it. You yeah. want to use it or lose it. <laughs> you use it or lose it. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, um, but there's there's a lot of scenarios where you're you're gonna want to know some tactics of like mm-hmm. you know staying safe in that vehicle for sure. And so let's kind of talk about right at the beginning the the consideration of the vehicle type, right? Um, different vehicle types they're gonna have different pluses and minuses. We've talked about this a lot, especially with bug out vehicles. Yeah, right. We say that you know a truck or a jeep it's fantastic as a bug out vehicle because. Of A, B, and C, it's got four wheel drive. It's great if you need to go off road, but you've got to consider the other aspects to it as well. Is it great for a fast getaway if needed? Yeah. Is it great for escaping an on the road incident or you know a roadblock or a pursuer? Yeah. Maybe not quite as much, right? So you've got to consider where you're going to be, what you expect, what you know. Most people aren't going to expect to be in a high-speed chase or expect to run roadblocks, but it might be more of a thing if you're downtown Detroit or something like that or, you know, L.A. Um, So you got to consider that. So after reading a whole bunch of different articles, they said that probably the best all-around for tactical driving, a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about today and maneuverability would be— Is it an Oldsmobile Omega? Probably. (laughs) Plymouth? Yeah, 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 Chrysler LeBaron. (laughs) Drop top. Yeah, no one's going to mess with that. No. No one wants it. So not not we're not going to talk about a specific uh, brand or car, but the midsize or larger sedan is what they say is the best route for a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about today because these kind of split the difference between size, maneuverability, handling, and durability. So there's a lot of different aspects to this. Is that your, your throat? Uh, no. No. <laughs> No, that was my butt. <laughs> um, microphone's making noise. <laughs> yeah, the microphone's making noise. 
So the smaller, quicker vehicles, a lot of people well, think. Well, you think of like the majority of police cars. Yeah, they're exactly. sedans. That's exactly the reason for that. And they're, they, yeah, they're, they're not driving Mazda Miatas. Yeah. <laughs> right? They're not driving. Um, what was the, what, what was the like most common cop car? It was like the, the Ford. Taurus probably, right? No, no. No. The Taurus was for a long time, but it yeah. was the, God, what is it called? The, I don't the know. The Crown, the. Crown Vic. Something like that, yeah, right? Yeah, the Crown Victoria. That's like the old, yeah, like first they're, blood. They're kind like of Rambo. Boats. Yeah, they're kind of like boats, man. Yeah. But th- but the smaller, quicker vehicles, obviously, they can be faster. Um, they can maneuver like crazy. But as soon as you get bumped, or as soon as you hit something, that's where it's not great. So that's why that mid-sized to larger sedan is Crown probably Victoria. yeah, Crown Victoria. So any vehicle with a high center of gravity or clearance might be great for off-roading like we talked about, but try doing a hairpin turn on a Jeep <laughs> with a Jeep. It's not fun. Yeah. I mean, have you ever driven like a Jeep Wrangler that's like decked out on a freeway? No. Oh, you feel like you're taking your life in your hands. <laughs> like it is scary. Like my dad's got one that we used to take every single year. We take it to, to Moab. We do all the trails <clears throat> on Easter weekend, you know. The but thing. just driving down there. You like- drive it down the freeway, it is like you got a death grip on the steering wheel because it is so loose and you're doing my, a lot my of this. My dad used to pull like a 28 foot trailer. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's bigger than that, 32. I don't know. Yeah. Um, 652 or something like that. <laughs> yeah, long, but long. he used to pull with the Bronco. Yeah. And I oh. still remember he was like, oh, geez. Yes. Like weaving back and forth. Yep. I'm like, what is he doing? But he's just going to keep it on to. the road. <laughs> yeah. It'll fishtail if you don't. Yeah. But yeah. So. Those types of things you have to consider, even a big truck, like those big trucks, they probably got truck nuts on the back, you know, those suckers. And the drivers have big nuts. <laughs> the drivers got big nuts, for sure, for sure. <laughs> creatine all the time, drinking creatine nonstop. Yeah, you know pounding what I, energy drinks. They got that, you know, bar or the, the tattoo around their arm of the um, barbed wire, probably. Don't yeah. you, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. They Guaranteed. got that. Yeah, those guys. But anyways, they're five they're, of them just left this podcast. <laughs> That's the only five that listen to us, probably. Shut up, man. That's all right. Um, they don't know what's coming. But those trucks are not great for maneuverability. No, you could barely park those bastards. Yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, they're great because you can see over everybody, and you're big, and you can, you know, bigfoot truck over stuff. But as soon as you got to do some maneuvering yeah, and take a thirty mile an hour turn you, at fifty. You probably, mm-hmm. yeah, probably exactly. All they take. So those high center of gravity things and those big wide suckers sometimes not great. So so your environment will dictate what's going to be best here and what your goals are are going to dictate which route you take with your vehicle. So those are things you need to consider moving forward. So as after you have your vehicle and and you want to do some of this cool stuff that Cam is going to talk about here in a minute, there are some vehicle mods that you can do. You can download them. You can download them, right? Um, if you got enough points. But uh, if you're if you're gonna do some of this stuff, if you expect to be in a car chase, if you expect to hit roadblocks, um, not roadblocks, roadblocks. I'm not talking about Roblox. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like I said Roblox. <laughs> it kind of. <laughs> no, no. And I was going along with it. Like, yeah. Hell yeah, Roblox. Yeah, Roblox. Uh huh. Yeah. Minecraft too. All that stuff. <laughs> So if you're expecting a, that crazy situation, you want to be prepared for roadblocks, Mad Max style car chases with a guy on top with a bungee cord and a, and a guitar, so cool. <laughs> guitar. You know what I mean? That's, that was always my favorite part in that Mad Max. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so creepy. There's a there's a few modifications and specs and ideas for you to consider. The number one thing is consider an anti roll bar. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> so this is part of many uh, suspensions. They help you reduce the body roll of a vehicle during fast cornering or, or over road irregularities. It's great. Putting one on the Milan this afternoon. Oh, for sure. <laughs> We're going to custom fit one in there. I should just like keep adding like all this like <laughs> Crazy. post-apocalyptic you should. style stuff on Definitely it. Definitely should. So that's something you can consider. Another thing is a powerful engine, and that might be the easiest Duh. thing to do. Of course, you got to get a powerful engine. But if you need to push or pull anything, yeah. you're going to want it, right? Especially when it comes to roadblocks and things like that, roadblocks. <laughs> um, you're definitely going to want that powerful engine. Um, most people say, most of the experts say that an automatic transmission is the key yeah. in these situations because it simplifies your driving. You might feel cool doing you know, a manual transmission, but it's not it's as true. efficient. It's much harder. Plus... Those clutch cables, they can snap. Yeah. And once they do, they're broken. Yeah. That's bad. 
You Apparently, I have one that's close to snapping. Yeah, I know somebody sent us. A, 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 that was pretty good. It was good. Yeah, it's like he can hear. I it. can hear. Mm-hmm. There's this cr- creaking noise. Either mm-hmm. your spring's too tight, or mm-hmm. it's a little creaky, or you're gonna Clutch snap you. your Johnson rod. Yeah, Johnson rod's about to go out and go get you an aftermarket one. <laughs> it's time. Yeah, yeah. Some other mods to consider: heavy duty Tony radio. Bar's about to twist. <laughs> <laughs> you got to twist your Tony bar on the back end of that, sucker. I can hear it. You know, I love that 77 forward, but yeah. the Tony bar on that thing is going to snap every time. Yeah, so somebody sent, we had your, your truck in something, like it showed a little bit of it. Said, oh, hell, is that a 72 Chevy? I'm like, no, it was a 77 Ford. Oh, I was way off. <laughs> That's so damn funny. <laughs> <laughs> like he, he's trying to act like he's all like the car guy and all cool. It's like, oh shit, I was way off. <laughs> <laughs> no, is that the '66 International? Yeah, no. Okay, no. I thought I knew my. Hell, that a '91 Chevy Silverado? <laughs> no, no, a '77 Ford. <laughs> Sorry, that buddy. looks like a DeLorean to me. Is that right? <laughs> I got that new brand new flux capacitor in the back, probably <laughs> guessing. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I overcharged it. Yeah. Use a Ryobi battery in it. Yeah. I overcrank that shit. That's what I do. <laughs> you see? I'll send you a video. Yeah. yeah. Got some torque, yeah. a bunch of torque on it. Yeah. After, I don't know. Aftermarket Johnson Robs. That's the way to go. 100%. 100%. <laughs> Me and Kobe do guys. this all the time because we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> like, <dude>. Obviously. <laughs> Well, we're just like, man, that Johnson. Uh, just the, just the car, the car guys, man. The way they talk sometimes, it's yeah, just like it's hilarious. All their own jargon. They're so damn smart, but this, we are not that. Yeah, like I want one in my group for sure. I do. Yeah, like, for my sure. brother in laws that way. Yeah. He he knows his cars. Yeah, a heavy duty radiator and a hose. Oh yeah, be great. you got that hard driving. You got that hot weather. You got that rough <laughs> terrain. What's yeah. that do? That overheats your engine, Cameron. Mm-hmm. And so a heavy duty radiator that's going to help you prevent that rapid overheating. You want her to get hot, but not that hot. STP. STP. Baby, all the way. <laughs> Stone Temple Pilots. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, high performance tires. Yeah. You know? And that's where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. For don't, sure. Don't tell them to replace your tires with some in the back the that used. have been used. Yeah. The, Everybody the takeoffs. does that. <laughs> the takeoffs. Is there any chance? What do you, you got one back there? Uh, yeah, it, so one side actually said to overinflate them slightly. Yeah. And fill them with run flat foam. Oh. Okay. Seems like a weird thing to do. Yeah. But that's what they said. I don't know. I believe them. Yeah. Um, improved lights go because it gets dark, Cam. And you got to be able to see in the dark. The better you can see, the better you can drive. Yeah. You know, it's a whole thing. <laughs> is is in then they also said get cut off switches, which I thought was a really cut cool off idea. jeans too. Yeah, you got to cut off jeans. You got cut off switches. <laughs> okay, yeah. the cut, these I like where this is going. Cut out switches. I said it wrong. <laughs> cut out switches. He, what, what the hell? Did you, what did you say? You got to be kidding me. These guys are talking about cars. You don't know what Johnson he says. Cut off switches. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know his ass from his elbow. <laughs> You know, I don't know a Johnson rod from a hole in the ground. (laughs) Did he say Johnson rod? You got to be kidding me. (laughs) So the cutout switches, they enable you to independently control each light on your vehicle. So the addition or elimination of lights at night can alter the appearance of your vehicle, right? You might allow you to lose a pursuer. Are you a motorcycle or are you not? <laughs> I was following that bastard now to turn it into a motorcycle. It's a wraith. <laughs> He's going to be parked in the middle of the road, oh, down the road, for sure. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, my dad has a story of like, when he's driving on the farm, you know the dr- farmer's driving in the middle of the road? Yeah. And has a motorcycle. <laughs> and like the like clips freaking uh, side view mirrors because oh, no. it was a truck with the light out. Oh, no My way. My dad's like, dur, dur, dur. it's just more shit. <laughs> Took his mirror off. <laughs> oh, oh, hell. But yeah, that's a good idea. That is a good idea, Turned right? Turned into a motorcycle. Heck yeah. Is that a moped or is that a truck? I don't know. Honey, could you turn off the back left quarter panel light? Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate that, babe. <laughs> Hand me them corn nuts as well. <laughs> Listen to that Johnson Rod. <laughs> Listen to that sucker purr. <laughs> Johnson Rod is doing his job today. <laughs> doing his job today. You want me to say that again? <laughs> Johnson Rod. Babe, you see how big my Johnson Rod is? <laughs> Yeah, I, need you, yeah. I need you to lubricate my Johnson rod. Baby. All right, turn on all the lights. <laughs> turn off. Okay, turn them off. Oh, yeah, turn them all off. Turn them all off. I don't know. Oh, stainless steel brake lines. Yeah. You know, you got them rubber ones. That's that's for people who don't know what they're doing. 
Okay. Yeah. It's they, a guaranteed failure. They swell, they flex. They crack, they break. Yeah. <laughs> <That Exactly. wasn't... laughs> we just didn't even plan that. <laughs> you stainless steel brake lines, they're used in racing competitions. Yeah. That's what the big boys use. <laughs> yeah. NASCAR. Yeah. F1. Tom Petty. Tom Petty. <laughs> and the heartbreakers. Yeah. Um, a roll cage. Because if you roll it, you won't, don't want to die. No. So that's good. Anti-roll bar. Yeah, well, and then bull, roll bar. Bull, bulletproofing. Yeah. You can do that. You can get those Kevlar door panels. Apparently, you can get bulletproof windows. Yeah. That's a thing that's possible. Think about it. Plan B or whatever. Mm, don't, yeah. I think they... Racing harnesses. Those, oh, like, yeah, Five-point yeah. harness. I do want those. Those are great. We had my those truck in my Jeep. would look ridiculous, but they'd be great. Yeah, but you'd be cool. With, you know what I mean? There's so much like better if you like. Oh you're yeah, gonna be ramming a bunch of barricades. <laughs> yeah, you you're want, gonna want those want straps, step, especially from that '77 Ford. I don't know like <laughs> what those seat belts are like. Oh no, they probably snap. Oh yeah, it's a bad deal. So th- those would be a great thing to up upgrade. How about the switch activated fire extinguishing system? Oh wow. Yeah, I know that's something. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Wow. There's, there's fire, you know, on a Johnson rod casing. Looks a little hot. Yeah, Ow. and you just hit that button and you're good to go. Just um, a sprinkling system in your whole vehicle. Mm-hmm. Heavy-duty shocks and springs, obviously. Yeah, that's the one thing, like, my truck's really, like, bouncy. Mm-hmm. Real bouncy. Yeah, she gets a bouncing. Heavy-duty battery. You know, you add all those additional lights. You add those cutout switches. <laughs> you add an extra electric Johnson rod on the back end. You've <laughs> got to have a battery that can run all this stuff. Yeah, and it's you've got, and then maybe you got communication gear in there. Maybe you got all these other things. You got to have a heavy duty battery, and it's just great to have it. You yeah. know, um, an alarm system. This isn't necessarily great for tactical driving. Like you don't need an alarm system to do a J turn or whatever. No. But if you get your car stolen, you can't do shit. So you've got to keep that. You got to keep that thing there. So alarm system is great yeah. to keep your car from being stolen. Um, CD- First horn I'm putting on there too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, you got to have that. A CB radio. So this could be great because it's going to help you communicate while you're driving. You can listen in on whatever whatever else is going on because maybe it's you and a buddy, and you're trying to get around people, and you're trying. Or maybe to- it's the pursuer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm following this guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right now I'm gonna probably put him off the road. <laughs> Who's on this line? <laughs> Get off this frequency. Hey, is your uh, refrigerator running? <laughs> this yellow truck stands out like a Thor thumb. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm dragging a Johnson rod down the backside of that truck. <laughs> we better we better get him stopped. He ain't going anywhere with that yeah. truck. A locking gas cap because you can't evasively drive if your fuel's been siphoned. True. So you got to get one of those. And or then, get a gas cap in general. Yeah. I don't think I have one. <laughs> you don't have one. Yeah. It's good. It's a good to have it. Just I'm in just going to give scavengers an easy, you know, what you do is you, is you you just stuff a, a little rag in there. <laughs> yeah. Then it's a, a, it's a driving Molotov cocktail. It's already, pre- it's <laughs> it's ready, already to ready. It's ready to roll. Put it out, put it in a bottle. Boom. Yeah. Yep. Uh, reinforced heavy duty bumpers. Yeah. That's a, it's a given. You got to have that if you're yeah. going to be doing some crazy stuff because you're going to hit things. Mine's all rusted out. So yeah. I need to replace Probably that. Probably do need to replace heavy that. One. Yep. So those are some of the things you can consider if you're looking to build yourself a tactile evasive uh, vehicle. It, <laughs> it sure does sound like a. Uh, uh, yeah, it sounds like a great vehicle. <laughs> no, what? Well, I forgot the movie Mad Max. Oh, it does, huh? Yeah, just build a Mad Max car. Mm-hmm. You're good to go. Um, Interceptor. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Get the mm-hmm. Interceptor going. So, um, we've talked about this a bunch of times before. The inside the vehicle kits and tools. Yeah, you have to be careful here because apparently people do not know how to efficiently pack no. their car full. <laughs> My gosh. The the TikTok video that we did on our vehicle preparedness kit, which we didn't say you had to have all of this stuff. No. These were things to consider, and it really wasn't as I, insane so as people thought. So just in joking, if you saw, like, I posted a video yeah. of just throwing all that stuff in the truck, like, mm-hmm. ridiculously. Yeah. But when I lined it all out, I was like, it's really not that much stuff at all. No, it'll, it like will fit in your truck. Spare tire is going to be on there anyway. And <laughs> yes. then, like, I threw a full size shovel in just for fun. But, like, it all would fit behind my single cab mm-hmm. seat. Like, it's like, give me Where a Where are you supposed to put a grocery? Yeah. 
I need to buy 16 cars to transport all this. I got to take a U-Haul trailer everywhere I go. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. funny comment. Uh-huh. Well, everyone guess we're not going to put the kids in the car. It's going to have gear. We're <laughs> up, <laughs> up, <laughs> we're up, like, subscribe. Kitchen sink. Where does that go? <laughs> yeah. Like the same jokes over and over. It was. It's just like over mm-hmm. and over. I'm like, good job. You're not the first one. You're number 52 to say yeah. that same thing. <laughs> yeah. But um, there's a lot of different obvious like vehicle tools and kits that can help keep you going along no doubt. the way. No you, doubt. Know? you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, jumper cables, obviously. Spare tire. That is a big one. Um, yeah. Make sure your spare tire isn't all weathered and cracked in a piece of trash. Mm. Or a little teeny dinet, a little teeny tiny donut. Donut, donut. <laughs> I'm more the, drunk than that. The mini donuts. <laughs> yeah. I drove on one of those forever. Did you? Like, I had a Subaru and replaced it, and I'm like, I don't got time to change this tire. I think I go like 90 miles an hour on <laughs> oh the freeway gosh. with this tiny donut. <laughs> That's creepy. But anyways, um, consider making sure all of your, you know, serpentine belt and all that, if you still have it, you have an old vehicle like me. Mm. Um, hose repair kits. If you don't have that stainless steel hose, yep. you got to know how to fix You're it. You're right. Extra oil, olive oil, water. <laughs> I know, when we mentioned extra oil and washer fluid, and one guy was like, well, if you got to have that in your cr- your truck, you've already screwed up. <laughs> oh, well, you haven't prepared very your truck very well. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the comment, buddy. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, like, an, a gas can. And I'm mm. not saying you have to have a full spilling over gas can. On your dash. Just a five-gallon bucket of gas sitting in the passenger seat <laughs> that's sloshing everywhere you're gonna die if you have gas yeah put it in the a lot back of you got dumb dumb yeah but who doesn't you know have a backup mm. gas can so that you can run and get some gas exactly you don't have to have it full sitting in the you know strapped in seat belt mm-hmm. um but you'll be glad you have one for sure you never know where you're gonna siphon gas you know i do it every day every every single day uh spare key ready to go oh yeah and yeah. you also want to have that gas cap that locks, like you said, so no one's mm-hmm. going to be tampering with your fuel, yeah. stealing it. Seat belt cutter, yeah. glass breaking tool. Mm-hmm. I just put mine up um, just right above my head on the left side. Did you? Boom. Yeah. What? There's a whole bunch of those, but they're really nice because they have the seat belt cutter. They can, you can break glass really easy. Mm-hmm. It can be used as a weapon. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just make sure you have the maintenance taken care of on the vehicle yeah. that you've you know change the oil properly that you're carrying a little extra oil that your tires aren't bald Mm -hmm. you know you just got to go through the basic maintenance stuff and then have a basic repair kit like i there's one thing i put some sockets specifically like from an old socket kit yeah i just put them in my dash like put them in my you know glove box because it's like if i need them and i'm not using my other tools i have these old tools that are going to fit all like most every bolt in my car yeah so anyways, there's just some little things that you can throw into the kit, be ready to go, be able to drive forever. Good stuff. So, you know, speaking of being prepared for things, cybercrime will ruin your life. It already has. Yeah. You're going to get your information stolen. You're going to go on a website that you didn't mean to, get spammed for the rest of your life, yeah. lose your email, lose your kids, and your wife. Yeah. <laughs> Life and wife. Mm-hmm. But you can protect yourself easily if you get Surfshark. It's so easy. It's a very affordable VPN, a virtual private network that can protect you and all your devices from online threats. You basically, just go full on gray man online, shield all of your information from websites and other online services that you didn't mean to use or go to. Basically, it's going to take your IP, throw it in France. People can't track it. Yes. Yeah. You're connected to a server in a different country. That's pretty cool. One other thing that you can do with that is you can watch like Netflix in Bosnia or something. Maybe you want to watch specifics of a Brazilian channel that you can only get if you're connected to their country. So, exactly. anyways, there's some cool stuff that you can do with it, not just keep yourself protected. They'll also email you if your email password is compromised. Pretty cool stuff. 83% <clears throat> off if you use our code Casual Preppers. You'll get 24 plus three months, so you get 27 months for less than 60 bucks. Mm-hmm. You will not find a better one out there. Nope. One subscription covers every device that connects to the internets, and if you don't like it, you get 30 days money-back guarantee. Yep. Go to surfshark.deal slash casual preppers, try it out. You're going to love it. It's great. Go they just it. redesigned it, too. Yeah, I know. And yeah. it was already the easiest one in the world. Now it's and even they better. And they made it like 
it turned on how to turn on. Yep. It's great. So great. So let's talk about the everyday defensive driving. This is something that you should be doing right now. Mm -hmm. Not just you. I mean, everybody should be doing it, <clears throat> but you should too, Cameron. It's, especially as a prepper, what we do is we want to be ready for things and we want to be ready for situations where bad things can occur. And like Camp said, we are in our vehicles all the time. Driving is the most dangerous situation that we put ourselves in basically so every single day. Every day we're putting ourselves in this situation. So you're just you, a body moving through space. And exactly. Time. Like really, really fast. It's, yeah. it's crazy. So what is defensive driving? Basically, it's essentially driving in a manner that utilizes safe, strategies that enables motorists to address and identify hazards in a predictable manner. So, I mean, it's this is literally the most important part of this whole I thing. I agree. And, and plus Kobe's delivering it. Well, and it's the, it makes the, more sense. No. And it's the, uh, it's just the most basic obvious stuff, yeah. but sometimes you don't do it every time you get in a Nobody vehicle. Nobody does. Yeah. You should be defensive driving. So the number one thing, this is something I see that people don't do all the time. Leave room in front of you. That three to four second rule between you and the car in front of you, because that's where like most crazy things happen when you're driving. You've got you've got to leave enough room that you can stop or swerve to avoid a collision if somebody's in front of you. Yeah. Uh, because that's again that's where crap happens all the time, <clears throat> and you also need to think about this when you're at a stoplight or at a stop sign. A lot of people. They'll just pull right up and like brush the bumper in front of them, right? Like you're right next to them. Yeah. And then the guy behind you does the same thing. What happens if the guy in front of you, their car dies? So now you're stuck there until yeah. you can move their car. What happens if the car in front of you is pissed off at you, jumps out, and is coming back to beat the, like, oh. the piss out of you? You can't go anywhere. So leave that room in front of you so that you can drive off. Like, just like that. It doesn't take anything. Right. But uh, you don't want to get yourself stuck. It's just so important to do. You got to think about it. People do that all the time, too. All the time. It's like, yeah. why don't you get in my trunk? Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. Like touching bumpers. Rubbing's racing. Don't worry about it, <laughs> you know? It's not like you're parking a go-kart at the, <laughs> yeah. the park. No, leave a little Bump space. Bump it, touch it, there yeah, you go. it's crazy. Um, another thing to think about is always watching those mirrors, knowing what's going on behind you into the side of you. you. I don't know how many times you hear or see an emergency vehicle come and the guy in front of you is just like, oh, no idea what's happening. I just want to ram him off I know. the road. It's like, you moron. Yeah. You've got to be paying attention to that kind of, like I said, a lot of this stuff is so obvious, yeah. but people don't do it. Also be careful of others' blind spots. This I'm is glad something, you put that in there. It pisses me off. Yeah. Seriously, like the guy that drives right in your and blind we'll just spot stay there. and stay there the whole time. And you know they're there, but you forget sometimes. Yeah. Or the guy in front of you, or you're driving right there, and you know that that guy can't see you. So if you get there, either back off a little bit or go forward so that you're not in the blind spot of that car because that's, again, where bad things yeah. happen. I'm right? sure semi-drivers are like, I could kill oh. everybody. Oh, yeah. I don't know how they do it. You know, and but. they have those mirror setups where they, they should be able to see you. Right. But again, it's harder. So, yeah. But people do that all the time. All the like time. Like you'll be driving maybe, you know, under the speed limit and yeah. they'll stick with you. Right in there. The and you're yeah. like, it's just common sense, like you said. Exactly. Uh, never drive drowsy, obviously. Nah. This is a tough one, though. It's really tough. It's really hard. Avoid that overly aggressive acceleration. Those guys are just gunning it at a green light, hot rodding down the street. Yeah. You know, rolling coal on main. Rolling coal, Oh, yep. my gosh. Just, Our town's horrible so for bad. that. Yeah. Just showing off their exhaust systems and their whatever else, their truck nuts and... <laughs> don't do it nuts. it's just that's again where bad things happen stay within the speed limit it's there for a reason Cameron mm, yes okay I uh, <laughs> I'm not a good speed uh, limit always player. assume the other drivers are idiots this is how I do that this day. is basically how I um approach my defensive driving techniques just assume they're idiots because you're probably going to be right most of the time they're going to be idiots when you're merging when you're at intersections in all cases proceed with caution because they are probably idiots yeah okay i do that like every morning think about if i pull out into this and yes. somebody's not paying attention i'm dead exactly so going across you don't need to bolt it you let the person honk behind you yeah just give it a little... Give it some time. My wife's always like, green. And I'm like, no, yeah. just give me a second. Yeah. I'm going to try to figure things out. That's how that's how much I trust people. It's like when I go to a stoplight and I'm going through like a major intersection, I'm like... Me too. Looking both ways as I'm, like, I'm going as through. as if I'm walking. Yeah. Because like, people are so dumb. So just assume other people are idiots. Cut out the distractions. Texting, 
eating, sexual encounters while driving. <laughs> These all lead to crashes. Sexual encounters. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know what you mean. You know what I mean. Um, so just don't drive distracted. Right. Okay. Um, and this one's... Oh, this use your next turn one signal. gets me so mad. Use your I don't know why, too. Turn like, signal. Even if you're just cruising down the freeway yeah. and the, the ones that are bouncing between lanes and yeah. they don't use it, I'm like... Phew. Well, when I'm coming up to, like, a, you know, a T and I'm going to turn right and there's a guy coming towards me and he's, like, going, but he's kind of slowing down, but there's no turn signal. Yeah. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. He comes by and then he, like, waves at me. I'm like, dude, use your turn signal. Yeah. I could have went 30 seconds ago. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Just use your turn signal. It yeah, it drives everybody. me nuts. I mean, hell, I have my turn signal on all the time. Yeah. I uh, never turn it off. If you always keep it on, you never forget. <laughs> <laughs> my So, yeah, my truck doesn't, it doesn't reset when I straighten out the steering. Oh, it doesn't. So, you have so to I'm back. always, like, your yeah. sister's like, your blinker's on <laughs> yeah. one day, you know. Yeah. It's like, I'm old, the truck's old, leave us alone. Yeah. Do you know what makes me probably more upset when driving than anything is when you go to a four-way stop. And everybody's waving everybody and on. Everybody's waving everybody yeah. on. I'm like, why? Yeah. Why are we doing this? Is this is a traffic jam. This is how this is why it takes so long. If you just go for the next person who got there when yeah. they're supposed to go, everything's gonna go so much smoother. Everybody's like, no, no, you go. You're thinking they're nice. Don't be nice. Don't yeah. be nice. Go when it's your turn to go. <laughs> yeah. Let's not do this whole thing. I agree. You know what I mean? And most towns are just like, screw it, we're putting in a roundabout. We're putting in a roundabout, That's yeah. what happens, because people don't remember yeah. who goes first. Oh, my gosh. Or, they're, yeah, they're, maybe they just didn't pay attention, but then just wait, Yeah, I guess. But, oh, so annoying. I'd rather somebody just blast through. Like, I would, Stop too. and just go. I'm just like, go. oh, sweet. Okay, He's moving ahead. things along. At least we're going. Someone's going. Or when there's two going the same direction. Yeah. Just like, go. Don't wait. Don't, don't wait. Like, just might, you're, just you're gonna, go. People yeah. are waiting for the other one. Yeah, so anyways, that's kind of the basics on defensive driving, and it's just basically expecting people to be idiots and driving cautiously. Go back to your training in high school. Yeah, exactly. Go so. back, go back. So these next things are where the disclaimer kind of falls yeah. into yeah. place. It's it's more aggressive, tactical driving, and realistically, you're probably never going to use any of these you don't Just know. like most of our podcasts. <laughs> yeah. but, um, That's true. Huh? But like, there's some cool stuff in here and stuff that would be exciting to try. And I, I've tested some of them. Like, who hasn't done, you know, a J-turn yeah. in the church parking lot? Mm -hmm. Like, it's super fun. Maybe we should go do some. <laughs> we should. I'll, do, I'll take some video. Because, man, whipping that around feels so good. Oh, you love to whip it around. You get a little G-force. Yeah. Heads all rushed. You're like, man. <laughs> feel like I'm in Hollywood. That's right. Jason Bourne. <laughs> I'm discounting Matt Damon right now. <laughs> Discount Matt Damon. That was the best freaking comment on any video I think we've ever gotten. Somebody called Cam. So I do, like my side profile, I've had yeah. people tell me it looks like Matt Damon's. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what did he say? He said, he said, Discount Matt Damon's looking pretty Jewy today. <laughs> Isn't that what he said? Yeah. Something like I'm that. I'm not even 100% sure what the I'm not Jewy, sure. But the Discount yeah. Matt Damon, oh Kobe and I gosh. were dying. That's hilarious. That's way funny. I am a Discount Matt. Yeah. But, um, First things first, mm -hmm. before you even get in that car, well, when you get in that car, yeah, like make sure that you are like in command position. Okay. So you're not lean back, you know, you're mm -hmm. not a homie driving through the hood. Like you want to sit upright mm -hmm. and you want to be able to reach your pedals. You're not stretching. You're not, basically you yeah. want your back and your shoulders to be comfortably against the seat and be able to rest your head. That's, I don't like. I don't like driving that way. I don't, well, I don't mind it. To be honest, like a lot of guys get, it's almost like, oh, look how cool I am. Look, I come all the way back. Yeah, that too. And I roll all the way back so I can barely see. Yeah, that's how a man's supposed to drive. I'm like, no, but, that's not, no. I know, I know. They're like looking out the passenger window in the back seat. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you doing? <laughs> like you roll their window, you're rolling the window down, yeah. they're rolling down the back window uh, to talk to you. What's up? No, man, the, you got to be able to sit up and touch the freaking yeah. pedals. And there and there's reason for that is, is like you don't have to reach, you're able to control the steering better. Yeah. And if you like impact, like the car is built to kind of. Mm -hmm. you know not crumple in your face <laughs> yeah that's the scary thing is like a lot of people are like you know scoot way back so that your legs and arms and stuff don't yeah. get crushed but you're more likely to safely drive and avoid obstacles exactly. if you yeah. can reach and that comes to the other point of steering wheel grip you mm -hmm. want to be nine o'clock and three o'clock positions 
It used to be 10 and 2. That's race. I know. Now they changed it. Yeah. So race car drivers, they're always at 9 and 3. And that's because you get full range. And that's another thing is like when you turn your wrist, like when you turn from the 3 mm-hmm. o'clock and 9 o'clock to the 12 and 6 o'clock, like yeah. you shouldn't be reaching and your shoulder shouldn't really come far away from mm-hmm. uh, the seat. And that just helps if you get impact. You're not going to get whiplash. You get rammed from behind or anything like that. So. I'm thinking about maybe getting one of those tractor posts on mine. I want you know? one. The suicide knob? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's the way to do it. I know. I, post, yeah. If apocalypse happens and there's yeah. no laws, I'm putting one Get on. one of those. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to put hydraulic steering in. Oh, 100%. This is the best. 100%. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And another thing is if you're going to run into like a barricade or something you got to break through like a bootlegger grip so that that means you're not going to put your thumbs you're not going to grab it like you grab like a pole or something like that you're going to keep your thumbs to the sides monkey grip it and i think i think demolition derby they do that so they don't oh, really? sprain and break their thumbs that's what we call monkey grip in jujitsu like is that. it yeah we use oh yeah because so, it's actually better so it's a monkey this. so you don't jack your thumb so you don't well it's just actually stronger oh really yeah oh so then then with your thumb but yeah the bootlegger grip is safer like if you're gonna like the if the steering wheel you know you hit something mm-hmm. it grabs your tire and it whips the you steering don't, wheel like, you're not gonna snap your thumb yeah. off. Um, you don't always have to drive like that. Like, <laughs> but <laughs> like if you're planning on a little contact with yeah. another car or something, you want to do that to protect your hand. Um, I just like the palm on the you know what I, I mean? know <laughs> yeah. just the palm. I usually will put my fingers through like the hole and I'll hold like right oh, where the is, horn is. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> usually three. <laughs> this is getting. <laughs> But I just like that's comfortable. It's getting serious. Terrible to drive. Yeah. Um, isn't it if you're one if you drive with one hand, top of the steering wheel's got the most control? I don't I think know. That's what it was. I just remember that. I would pass that test. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so okay. uh tactical driving, the nine o'clock, three o'clock position, shoulders comfortably against and and hopefully your head too against the backrest mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So that's before you even get in or get driving and stuff, you know. Okay. Um there's also two foot driving where you actually, instead of having your left foot just rest, mm-hmm. you have it kind of comfortably on the brake and you have your right on the gas. Not great for regular driving. No, every day. you're going to burn up your brakes. Yeah. Or, yeah. So that's just more of a tactical. You're, it's going to be quicker reaction time. You don't have to move your right foot. Yeah. Let me touch your foot a couple more <laughs> <Feels> times. Weird. <laughs> Let, you know what? Put your toes up. I won't pretend your gas pedal. <laughs> this right is now. gas. This is brake. <laughs> so I'm going to demonstrate yeah. real quick. Um, but, there's other people that say you use that left foot to kind of brace yourself up against the seat so you're not, yeah. you know, experiencing G-force throw you on the other side. That's how they do. Astronauts do it. Yeah. So, yeah. anyways, get your comfortable footing position. <laughs> um, another key thing to remember is, like, know the roads mm-hmm. in the place that you're in or where you work, where you're going to be traveling to. That just gives you a quicker escape route. Mm-hmm. You know, we've talked about that a billion times. You know, you know, you know. Um, road hazards, barriers, and ramming. Yeah. (laughs) Calm down a minute. (laughs) So, Uh. often in an ambush, people are going to block, you know, I keep saying it. Sorry about that. You know, I can't stop saying it. Yeah. But, in an ambush, you're going to have one or two cars that are going to block the path. Mm -hmm. So, there's some tactics to, like, ramming those. Obviously, you're not going to go right for the door. <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> Who knows? You've seen a million Hollywood movies. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of explanation here. You're going to go for the points that are going to spin. You can mm-hmm. go for the back end. You can go right between two cars. You're going to hit them right in the nose so they can spin out of the way. Yeah. I love it. I do, too. We should practice that. Let's do it. Let's get our wife's car. Go down to Walmart. Park them. But, um... So, yeah, that's a basic tactic when you come up on a road barrier. Again, mm-hmm. you want to go to the bootlegger. You don't bootlegger. want your... Monkey grips. Yeah, monkey grips. And then if you're going to, if you plan on running into roadblocks or you're like, man, I'm roadblocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Roadblocks. Yeah. Um, you're probably going to want to disable your airbag. That's probably a good idea. Because if you go through a barricade and boom, <laughs> that's, that's true. You're going to want to think screw about you that big huh? time. Because it's like, it's going to keep you safe, but if you're like, there's a chance that we're going to run into roadblocks or we're going to have to push a tree out of the way, any, mm-hmm. you know, weird stuff like that, you probably want to disable It's going to be a hindrance yes. at that point. <laughs> yeah. It's going to hurt. Honey, don't worry. Boom! It's just like, <laughs> yeah. you're not going to see anything. Um, they're not very hard to disable, so I've 
understood. Well, you a lot of them have, the, fuse. have a fuse, have a key. There oh, that that's you right. Can yeah. Actually, switch it. It's up to you on the passenger. On the passenger side. Oh but, yeah. Well, you're still you're gonna want to do both of them. Yeah, you are, because <laughs> it's gonna. I think won't they like blow the windshield out too? I don't know. I don't even. Have never never had it. I don't, I don't have a car that hasn't worked. <laughs> But think about that. Okay. Um, also, the one thing everybody thinks is that they need to just haul ass. Yeah. You know, I need to go 90 to 100, get away from people. Mm-hmm. Like, you're more likely to just kill yourself and yeah. anybody you come up on. You're not going to be able to avoid obstacles in the road. You can't stop in time. So safely, um, most of the time, that you're going to want to approach like the six, 30 to 60 mile an hour range. Okay. You don't need to be going... A thousand miles an hour. I guess if it depends, right? If you get on a straightaway, if you're on a freeway or something, that's the other. Yeah, that's the difference. And it feels if like it's, it's an open. open, and you know, you can open it up. Yeah, you can let, really get on that gas. Let that Johnson rod do the work. <laughs> but like in mm-hmm. town, small roads, back country roads, which were is just where most people are going to be heading. Yeah, like bugging out thirty to sixty, and that allows you to take turns and not die. Okay. Um. So, what if you're followed? Like, what are some of the things you can do if you have a tail? Yeah. Ensure your windows and doors are locked, obviously, because I you do don't that know. all the time. I do too. <laughs> uh, seriously. Like, I'm, I'm yeah. an, in line at Taco Bell driving. I'm like, is this locked? Yeah. With some crazy person coming over here <laughs> and messing with me. I hate when it's seriously. dark too. I'm like, um, somebody, <laughs> like some bum that's drunk or on yeah. drugs is going to get. Yeah. Speaking of, uh-huh. I got to tell you a story real quick. Okay. I think you guys would appreciate it. My my brother's son was in a car accident, and he's he's okay. Mm-hmm. He had to go to court. Went uh, to court, and there was um, a Hispanic guy there that was like, he had gotten into a police car, mm-hmm. and the judge was asking, he's like, what were you doing? And he's like, were you drunk? No, I wasn't drunk. And his lawyer's like, he was on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and awful. he was on drugs. Yeah. And they're like, okay, so why did you get in a police car? And he's like, there was, um, there was... A uh, African American guy that was bald, mm-hmm. and he's like, I thought he was the pharaoh of Egypt, <laughs> and his police car was a chariot. What? So he got Jeez. in it, and like, uh, anyways, yeah, um, it didn't turn out too well for you that. You want to go meet the Anunnaki or something? <laughs> yeah, it's like, holy crap! That's awesome. So you don't know no. if you don't policemen, you should lock your cars more often. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I always do, man. Yeah, I, just, I mean, obviously, most I need of to them a little are auto more. locks, anyways, most of them. Yeah. But uh, I just make sure. But it's that. a big deal. And if yeah. you're driving and stuff, you never know. They could you could be slowing down. People are gonna come out of the woods. Yeah, you can jump in your back seat and ask for a ride. You don't want that. I don't like giving anybody rides. Yeah, no, I don't either. Uh, obviously, if you're if you have a tail, don't go to where like your home is or your yeah. bug out location. Don't be like I can lose them around here. Take them as far away as you can and just try and get rid of them. Yeah. Uh, make note of your gas gauge, like. As a prepper, should be more than half full already. Should be. But if you're getting low, then your tactics are going to change. You know, I'm not going to take them 100 miles out and run out of gas. Yeah, it's not a great idea. No. Um, other things is like make note of the model, license plate, things like that. Because you never know. If somebody's tailing you and maybe they, they disappear at that point, mm-hmm. if it shows up again, yeah, then you got to be real scared. Okay. Uh, to shake a tail. Oh, man, that sounds... Shake a tail, fella. Shake a tail. Uh, circle the block repeatedly, hopefully at somebody else's block, pull into a parking lot, but don't get yourself trapped in that spot. Like maybe you're going to back into somewhere, like go around and turn back in there and you, hopefully they pass. Yeah. But if they're going to pull down the same street, you want to be able to quickly get out, hopefully in a different direction. Yeah. Um, make a bunch of U-turns, try and throw them off. And then you can really tell if, if they're actually following you. I do this all the time. Going home from work it takes me like five hours to get home. <laughs> but I never I think have a tail. everybody's tailing me. Never have a tail, yeah. though. Nope. No one's ever followed me home. So say that you start doing some maneuvers and, and they're continuing their pursuit. It's probably going to, you know, advance into a chase or escalate into oh, a chase. Gosh. This is where it gets kind of scary. Yeah. Difference between a tail and a chase is simply that the pursuer knows you are aware of them. So now they're staying on your butt. Right. So doing those tactics when you have a tail kind of will either, they're not actually <laughs> tailing, tailing you, you um, but it also can show you whether or not, you know, they want to give some chase. Mm. Yeah. And you don't Let's want make that. make this interesting. Again, remember high speed chase is super dangerous and too risky. So you want to, you know, pace yourself. <laughs> 
this sounds hard because you know you think it's like man somebody's chasing me i'm just gonna gun it mm-hmm. at any point accelerating quickly is one thing but like getting up to high speeds you're not going to be able to make turns mm-hmm. you're not gonna be able to stop and it's just not a good idea this is where the 60 mile an hour is kind of where they say you should be kind of keeping it around that if they gain on you you know pull ahead but then slow it is, i don't know this is tricky stuff yeah super but tricky. you do not want to go super fast because it's just not going to turn out well tires aren't built for sustained high speeds the mm. ones that we buy yeah and so they get slippery they get loose and you're you're more likely to blow a tire blowing a tire at high speed equals death it's not good <laughs> no um hopefully it's the back tire yeah but uh some mess some different methods to lose that pursuer uh like again quick unexpected turns either maneuvers through natural flow of traffic or you do like a cutoff where you just you're heading down the road and i was going to talk about this later so i might as well talk about it right now going you know with traffic and then you see an opening hurry and take a left and like i said these these are unsafe things you shouldn't be doing normally but if you're trying to lose your tail yeah you're going to take a quick turn so that the traffic blocks them from taking mm-hmm. that same. They're going to miss the turn. That gives you a chance to go like park, hide. Yep. And again, or just get far enough away they can't find right. you. Right. And don't just park in a place like back into somewhere where the only way out is forward. Mm-hmm. So, um, other things are, are make the pursuit too difficult for them. If you do have an off road vehicle, go where they can't go, mm-hmm. cross a ditch, climb a curb. You know, maybe you got Batman car. Shoot up a building. <laughs> Just go straight up the building. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, think about what you have, what you can do. Um, maybe you can cross a stream. It's risky. Uh, but Ghostbusters say you should never cross a stream. <laughs> that's true. I don't but know. But maybe have a snorkel. Okay. You know. Yeah. Depends yeah. on your modifications and yeah. the type of vehicle, but make it hard for them if you can. You know, maybe you can go through the. Uh, I call it a borrow fit. What does that call in the middle? I don't know. Anyway, the in between the highways, the middle, the middle. <laughs> I always say borrow pit. Did you ever say that? I don't know. I don't, I don't say know that. where. I, I don't know what I say. Anyways, but yeah, so you can make it difficult if you have the vehicle to do it. Mm-hmm. If you just have a, va- a fast vehicle, then, you know, take some turns, accelerate quickly, try mm-hmm. and lose that tail. If they're shooting at you, oh, you know, gosh. 300 meters gets pretty tricky for, you know, 300 meters yeah. is going to make it hard for them to aim properly. So you want to keep a good distance. Don't let them pull up beside you. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> they're yeah, going to shoot your face off. And then um, if they're shooting at you, do some slalom, weaving, things like that. Slalom. <laughs> weave. Bob and weave. Yeah. Uh, jump a curb. If you're going to do this and you may not have like the most jacked up car to mm-hmm. do it, you're going to approach it at a 45 degree angle. Yeah, you don't want to go right go on 90 degree and yeah, perpendicular. That that's rough. You can uh 45 mile an hour or so, you can bounce over the curb 45 degree angle. Just some simple things. Mm-hmm. So these are these next things are like tactics that have fancy names. You've all probably participated in them at one point as a teenager. Maybe you still do it cuz you're cool and you got mm-hmm. a cool area to do it. For sure. When it comes to cornering um, if you played games, stuff, learning the apex of the turn yeah, so that you can, you know, you're not going to go wide and you're going to, so if you got like a 180 degree turn, like a, uh, what's that? That's, uh, what's that called? A uh, U-turn? No. Well, it's a U-turn <laughs> robe. A, uh, pin. Oh, okay. What a pin turn. Hair pin turn. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Too much information. <laughs> yeah. And a hairpin turn, you know, you're going to, you're going to go wide and then you're going to hug the apex coming back through. Yeah. If you know some of those things, like a lot of times pursuers, you know, they just, they're not the most, I'm not saying they're stupid people, but they are. Yeah, sure. They're just like out to get you. They're not going to follow some of these techniques if you've learned them. So hugging the the apex of a turn for quicker acceleration out of a turn can make that, you know, that much of a difference. Yeah, just knowing when to accelerate is a a big thing. Yeah. You know? And it's crazy how many people just don't know how to drive very well. Uh, the cut. So this is what I was talking about where you just make a quick left turn mm-hmm. with oncoming traffic. That'll give you some time to put some distance between you and somebody that's chasing or pursuing you. The other thing is the the pit technique, which oh. is some, one of the coolest ones ever. Yeah. And so you guys have all seen this with, you know, the police force always uses it. 
where you're going to go and kind of push on their back bumper. Either you're going to accelerate. So there's two ways to do it. Um, watching videos is, is pretty helpful. You can kind of see some of these things because mm-hmm. you're probably not going to ever be able to try this. Yeah, this if is you one do, you that would get be to awesome. Practice. So the pursuit intervention technique is basically when you're spin the car out in front of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, two ways. One, you can go up to the side of them. Um, you're just going to kind of clip their back quarter panel and spin the tire or spin them out. The other way is you can kind of touch on their back left or right bumper and accelerate, and that'll push push one push side in the opposite yeah. way. Um, to kind of counter this technique, you must attempt to drop your speed below 30 and it's very hard to, to spin a car at that speed, which is oh, kind of interesting. It is interesting. So if you go really slow, you're like 10 miles an hour pursuit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is going on? But then the firearms come back into play there. That's true. Yeah. So if they're not shooting at you. Yeah, if they're not shooting Go you. pretty slow. They can't spin you out. So the J turn, this is the reverse 180. Mm-hmm. This is the one that I used to do in high school all the time. Yeah. And teacher, I would switch cars. So I would do it in the parking lot mm-hmm. and then I'd bring my truck to school because they would like write down my license plate. Oh, yeah. And I would like not drive it for two weeks. Yeah. And then I'd come back in that car. But this is when you can accelerate backwards, like 25 miles per hour. Mm-hmm. You crank your wheel to the left or right, and it'll just whip your front end around. Mm-hmm. Apply a little brake, and then you just power through. Then you can just hurry and quick go. It's a beautiful it's thing. It's super fun to do. Yeah. And it, it feels like you're at a ride. It's even you're better when ride. there's just like a light dusting of snow on the parking oh, lot. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's even better. Usually you do about a 540. <laughs> yeah, it's so much fun though. <laughs> but um, that's a really cool method. You know, of getting away, like somebody pulls in in front of you, you can just hurry and do a J turn. Mm-hmm. The bootleggers turn 30 mile per hour forward and you apply a little handbrake. So this is kind of the J turn in reverse. You're going forward and then you're going to start to turn hard left or right. And then you're going to apply your handbrake. If you apply your regular, regular brakes, blah, 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 you're going to like slow the whole car down. You're yeah. going to lock up the ABS. So you, the handbrake's going to lock the back so that they're going to spin around. Mm-hmm. And then you just put it back in gear and go forward. Like I said, these are super hard to, like, explain in words. Yeah, you got to look at a video. Yeah. And then there's the bootleggers three-point turn. So coming around a gradual turn, you basically you are going to take a left, and then you're going to back into the other spot and then, and just then go come forward. back. So you can do that pretty quick. Mm-hmm. And if somebody's pursuing you and they can't see around that turn, then by, by that time side. you're heading the other way. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, so, and then you've got the, so there's the J turn, the bootleggers turn, the bootleggers three point turn, and then, uh, it would be sweet to practice the pit, but you can't, you can just kind of see how that does. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it would be pretty, I'm sure it's like, there's a lot of technique behind it, but you could apply that pit. Sure. You know, if you're really wanting to slow somebody Mm -hmm. down. But to get out of it, I never knew that if you slow down 30 yeah. to 25 miles per hour, they can't spin you. That makes sense. And then, uh, yeah. So anyways, there's there's a lot of little tactical driving techniques. And there's a lot of YouTube videos. They're actually pretty cool to watch. Mm-hmm. You probably aren't going to apply a lot of these. And if you are, like, <laughs> things have gone south pretty quick. Yeah, but that's like, the thing. To always you never from... know. No. You know, even just thinking about the, um, you know, hitting up to uh, a roadblock and then making sure you're not just like ramming the driver's side door, <laughs> right. right? Think about those as you're going yeah. where to hit and um, turning off the um, airbags and, yeah. you know, how yeah. to hold the steering wheel. Those things I Taking think are actually turns good. is like probably one of the biggest things is people mm-hmm. don't, honestly, if you can, like, Go to one of those go kart racing places. Yeah, sure. and You start figuring out how to corner quicker. Yeah, you've got those little like switchback or not switchback, but just kind of like weaving turns. Just stay type straight. Stuff. You yeah, just fly right through it. Yeah, and those may be enough to distance you to where you can go and hide your vehicle. Well, and then like Cam said, there are places where you can actually go try all this stuff. Yeah, you can do like these. Yeah, you def- can pay and have a driving course, and, and, and they set up a parking lot with mm-hmm. cones. That'd be sweet. That'd be super fun. So, um. Yeah, it's just things to consider. You never know. Like, mm-hmm. in your vehicle, it's going to be something that's going to keep you safe. Yeah. But you may have, it. you know, somebody chasing you, and yep. you're going to have to figure out a way to stay safe again. Absolutely. It's not going to happen. Nope. It's be scary. All right, that's tactical, evasive, and defensive driving. Uh, guys, today's podcast sure, is brought to you by TacPack, the only monthly tactical subscription box with useful professional grade stuff inside. Use our code Casual Preppers, get a free separate bag sent of EDC gear along with your first month's TacPack. Head to TacPack.com. We do have a review today, a little highlight of the latest Crate Club. That's exciting. Like coffee in here. It does because my dog got into the coffee, unfortunately. 
Um, the first item is Putting the OST coffee out. Carbon Scraper. It's got a nut wrench, bolt carrier, extractor. Yeah. It cleans everything. It's pretty cool. And then we have the Black <laughs> Rifle Just Black Coffee. We can smell that sucker, medium roast. Yeah. And then we have the HME Ratchet Strap. Um, you, can, you can always use ratchet straps. Oh, yeah. Like, always. So these things are, I love getting that kind of stuff. Tie down. Then we have the Bone Dry Shotgun and Rifle Case. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, humidity and moisture can affect the performance of your gun. And this gets rid of that stuff in there. So Bone dry. Moisture removal material. It's pretty rad. Then we have the Bushnell H2O Waterproof Binoculars. Scope underwater. That's right. If you're out snorkeling and you got to see further. Eight times, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm. Then we have the SOG Aegis AT Tonto Forest and Moss. Beautiful little knife. It is good looking. Beautiful knife. I like the color. Mm-hmm. And then we have the Walker's Rope Hearing Enhancer. These are great to help you hear better. Yeah. It's, it's like you're out and, you know, you're stalking somebody or stalking some animals, whatever it is. They're great for it. <laughs> yeah. So we got, that's the latest. Long-term SHTF. Start that's losing right. your hearing. Be glad you, you got something, these. right? So that's it. You got a quick and dirty today? Yeah. So yeah. just real quick. Oh, I got to hit the button, right? It's time for the oh. quick and dirty medical gotta tip. Got to do the button. Yeah, you got to do the button. Uh, recently had a kid with diarrheas oh, and yeah. vomiting. Mm-hmm. Pretty quick dehydration. Mm-hmm. Uh, just some quick things that you can do for little ones and preventing dehydration. Because it, it's freaking tough, man. Oh, it's so hard, yeah. They don't want to drink. You got mm-hmm. sore throats, whatever. So here's just a, a really easy method to deliver some fluids. So one thing is the fluids themselves. Mm-hmm. Like you don't like always have to say, oh, it's Pedialyte. Like Pedialyte oral rehydration solution that you made, mm-hmm. are, they're all good. Don't give fruit juices, high C, Hawaiian punch, That's Kool-Aid, bad. sodas, syrups. Like even though that may be the only thing they want to drink, it's still bad. So mm. try and avoid those things. Water, oral rehydration, salts, they're pretty gross. Yeah. Like <laughs> um, when you're sick, water just like you're just like Ugh. it is gross. Yeah. Pedialyte's probably one of the easier ones. Like having some of that on hand could yeah. be like a, make a huge difference for mm-hmm. you. Um but the thing that kids do a lot is they'll just like want to take a swig of like maybe an ounce or less, and then you're like, Oh, they're drinking pretty good. Yeah. And they're still way dehydrated. Mm-hmm. So one thing that you can do is you basically use a syringe and you're going to draw up like five to 10 ml in that syringe. And you're going to set a timer for five to 10 minutes. Every time that goes off, whether it be you're giving the fluid slowly through that until the timer goes and you're going to drop more or Mm -hmm. at each five to 10 minute interval, most of the time you'll set it for 10 minutes and you're going to keep doing that for like two to four hours. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a ton, but if you can prevent the trauma of IV, taking them to the hospital, and you may not have that possibility, this is going to save your butt yeah. because you're reminding yourself they've got to have 5 to 10 ml every 5 to 10 minutes. Yeah. Pretty easy to remember, and that can be, you know, Gatorade even. Uh, you can use the Pedialyte, and that little amount is easier for a kid than trying to get him to swig two ounces oh, yeah. every hour. Yeah. It's impossible. Yep. So that's just like... Super simple way to prevent dehydration in kids. I like that. And you're kind of shooting for 50 to 100 um, ml per kilo. Mm -hmm. So kilogram, 2.2 pounds. Okay. And so you're shooting for like roughly 50 to 100 ml per kilo per like for every two hours. So Cool. Not medical advice, just... Tip. Just a tip. From a casual prepper. That's right. <laughs> thank you, Cameron. Uh, thank you all for listening. You got anything else you want to say before we go? No. You know, Please drive safe. Please drive safe. Stay survived. <laughs>